I started dating 12 years ago. Since then, I have been in multiple failed relationships and once successful, I have gotten my heart broken and I have broken hearts, I have been rejected and I have rejected people, you name it, I've done it. If I had a time machine, I would go back in time and shake some sense into teenage me, but unfortunately for teenage Bicera and fortunately for you, I can't go back in time. So I'm here to shake some sense in you and tell you everything you need to know before you get into a relationship and while you're in a relationship and after. If you have ever racked your brains thinking what on earth makes a relationship good, you're in for a treat. Now, I'm no expert, but I have been with my partner for almost three years and I have built a beautiful and loving relationship. And I couldn't have done that if I didn't go through the crap that I went through repeatedly. Let me paint you a picture. You meet someone, you're attracted to them, you start dating and you realize that you don't really have any feelings for them. But you've been told that love takes time and eventually you will fall for them. So you stay with that person because they seem like a good choice for you, even though you have more feelings while washing dishes than while being with them. Time goes by, feelings never come on their own, but you force yourself to love them. You convince yourself that this is indeed love and that all the love stories you ever heard about were just exaggerating and love isn't really this powerful, over-consuming feeling that makes you want to dance your little heart out. I've been there. It ain't pretty. Chances are you're gonna end up hurting them, especially if they have real feelings for you. And then they're gonna spend years wondering why they're so unlovable when all along they were not the problem and neither were you. You just didn't love them and that's okay. Now, I'm not saying that real love is something you feel the very first time you look into the eyes of someone and you immediately know that they're your soulmate, but if there aren't any sparks at the beginning, you won't be lighting any fires later on. What I'm saying is, if you like someone, give them a chance, go on a few dates and see how you feel about them. Be honest with yourself as well as with the other person. And if you're not really feeling it at the beginning, face it, let them know and move on. They might be a bit hurt now, but you'll spare them a lot more pain in the long run and you'll avoid wasting your time. If there's one thing you take away from this video, let it be this. Do not, under any circumstance, ignore red flags. Red flags tend to come in different shapes and flavors and we tend to ignore them, thinking that it's just not that big of a deal. They will change. You will make them change. I'm sorry to break it to you, but that ain't gonna happen. If you notice a red flag early on, run, run like the devil. I can't possibly list all of the red flags you could potentially face, but some of them include hyper jealousy, selfishness, lack of consideration for other people's feelings, superiority complex, lack of boundaries, lack of respect for your time and for you as a person, violent behavior, obsessive behavior, acting like you should spend all of your time and energy on them because they are everything in your life, insulting you and your choices, being condescending, not willing to adapt and compromise but always doing what they want regardless of how you feel about it. Man, I could go on and on about this but I think you get the point. I see people making the same mistake over and over again. They keep ignoring all of these things because they somehow believe that it's gonna get better or that it won't be such a big problem. I've been there myself and trust me when I tell you that it doesn't lead anywhere good. You have to be cautious and protect yourself from potential harm. So please listen to your intuition and don't ignore all of the things that you're not okay with. It will come back to bite you in the ass. On a similar note, don't expect them to change. People don't change. They have the capability to adapt, but core personality traits remain there no matter what. So if there's something you notice in their personality that you really don't like, decide whether you can live with it. Because trying to change someone is only gonna lead to pain and disappointment for both of you. Honesty is key in relationships. It's not an easy thing to do, but it's very important to be honest from the beginning so that you can set the foundations of the relationship right. Now, I'm not saying that you should reveal all of your deepest, darkest secrets on your first date, but try to be yourself as much as you can. We tend to act differently when we meet someone that we like because we want to impress them in order to get them, but what usually happens is that when we do get them, we go back to our usual selves and that's when problems arise. You also wouldn't want someone to act completely differently from their real self just to score you. So be honest and don't set the wrong expectations. Aside from being honest, it's really important to set boundaries from the get-go. We are all different people. We see the world through a different lens. So naturally, we're all gonna have different expectations from relationships. Talk things through at the beginning. Tell them what you want and what you don't want. 
talk about where you would like the relationship to go and how you would like it to evolve. I know this seems counterintuitive and it feels wrong to talk about the future at the very beginning of a relationship, but if you're not open about stuff at the beginning, you're gonna run into obstacles later on and it will be much harder to make things right. An example that comes to mind is whether you're monogamous or you're okay with seeing other people while you're in a relationship. Some people are okay with it, others are not, but don't just assume that your partner wants the exact same things as you. Communicate things so that you avoid pain and confusion later on in the relationship. Having a talk about marriage and kids is also something that a lot of people avoid because they don't want to put pressure on a new relationship and most of you don't even know where you stand on that topic yet, but it's worth talking about it with your partner so that you don't realize you have completely different views later on. Also, abortion is a topic that really isn't discussed enough. If you're sexually active, no matter how careful you are, there always exists a risk of getting pregnant. So knowing where you both stand can literally be a matter of life and death. You definitely don't want any unwanted surprises when it's too late. A lot of people, especially in my culture, believe that when you're dating someone, there's no such thing as rape because your partner owes you sex anytime you want it. If you're surprised by this opinion because your culture sees things differently, then you're a lucky person and I'm happy for you. Where I come from, people have very backwards views on relationships that I've never agreed with. Your partner is not your property. They don't owe you anything and neither do you. Just because you're together, it doesn't give you the right to force them to do anything they don't wanna do. And I'm not talking about making compromises here. I'll talk about it a bit later. What I'm talking about is situations where one partner is clearly distressed because they don't want to do something and the other partner forces them and manipulates them. You'd be surprised how often this happens. If you're with someone that doesn't respect it when you say no and keeps pushing just to get what they want, I think you need to reevaluate your relationship and ask yourself if this person is really worth it. And if you're someone that doesn't respect your partner and doesn't understand the concept of consent, you need to take a good hard look at yourself and question your moral values. You're probably familiar with this scenario. You're feeling upset about something and your partner asks you, what's wrong? Nothing, you say while continuing to be grumpy. They ask you again, you refuse to elaborate and tell them that nothing's wrong. They accept your answer and stop asking you. And then you get mad because if they really loved you, they would know what's wrong. Because loving someone grants you mind-reading powers and words are just redundant, right? Wrong. I've seen so many relationships struggle because of lack of communication and I myself have struggled because of it. But I've learned my lesson. Don't get fooled by this idea that romanticism presents that when you love someone, you don't need to explain anything to each other because both of you just know how the other person feels. It's a very flawed idea that leads to a lot of pain. Establishing an open channel of communication from the start is in my opinion one of the most important factors that will make your relationship work. Be open with your partner. Even if it feels uncomfortable, tell them how you feel. If there's something that's bothering you, don't be afraid to share it. The conversation that follows might feel a bit heavy, but at least both of you will know what you're dealing with. If you don't tell a person what's going on in your mind, how are they supposed to just know and understand? I grew up in a family where we always talked to each other and shared how we felt about things. And I know this isn't the case for everyone, but you gotta work on it if you want to make your relationship last. I believe that your partner should be your best friend. Not your only friend, but your best friend. After all, this is a person that you plan to spend a considerable amount of time with, if not your entire life. So making sure that you like each other as people is of utmost importance. What do I mean by this? Well, a lot of people seem to love each other, but not a lot of them seem to like each other. And I think you need both in order to function as a couple. The way I see it, a relationship is just a very strong friendship with the added aspect of intimacy. So when you meet someone that you're attracted to, focus on finding out whether you can be friends with each other, whether you can do things together and enjoy being in each other's presence outside of the bedroom. And make sure that you can make each other laugh a lot. Laughter is the best medicine and without it, life is just miserable. I'm probably gonna offend someone with this one, but I feel it's important to talk about it. I don't mean to sound condescending, but if you're not on the same intellectual level with your partner, you're gonna have a hard time. And no, I don't care about how much academic success someone has, that has nothing to do with this. In my personal experience, and I can only talk from experience here, 
Anytime I was with someone who wasn't on the same intellectual level as me, I struggled to create a deep connection. I'm a deep thinker and I know a lot of you are as well. I've been in relationships where I couldn't have a complex conversation on any topic because the other person just wasn't thinking on that level. They were more superficial, kinda going through life day by day without thinking of the bigger picture, without questioning anything, without having an opinion on anything of importance. And it affected the relationship a lot. And just like I couldn't function with a person like that, I probably also couldn't function with someone who is way above me. It goes both ways. If deep and complex conversations are important to you, don't settle for someone who only cares about the superficial things in life. Aside from intellectual alignment, value alignment is something that can make or break a relationship. Each of us has a set of values and a moral code, a way we look at life and the world. If you're gonna get serious with someone, you better have those aligned. Let me give you an example. I'm vegan and for me, veganism is a part of who I am. I live my life in agreement with my moral values and I couldn't imagine being with someone who doesn't have the same moral values as me. I can be friends with someone who isn't vegan, but I can't share my life with them. I'm also non-religious and although I respect people who are religious, I can be with someone who is. These are core, fundamental aspects of how I view life and I've always known that they're non-negotiables in a long-term relationship. My father always used to say that I was limiting myself too much and that there's no way that I could find someone who is vegan and non-religious and a good match for me. My reply was that I would rather go through life alone than with someone whose moral code was vastly different from mine. Luckily, I don't have to do that because I found everything I was looking for in my partner and more. Why is this so important? Well, if you're not aligned in your fundamental values, you're gonna have a lot of disagreements and life together will be a living hell. If you have a different perception than mine, I'd be glad to hear your side in the comments below. But that's my two cents. My mom always used to say, in order for two people to be together, they need to have at least five things that they both enjoy doing together. I feel like this is overlooked way too often and it's the reason why most relationships fail. Don't get me wrong, I don't think your partner should be a carbon copy of you, but you gotta have some mutual interests. If your definition of a perfect Saturday night is going to the club and getting absolutely hammered, and your partner's definition is staying home, watching a movie alongside a home-cooked meal, and being in bed by 10, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but it's just not gonna work. I see it going two ways. One of you is gonna have to make compromises all the time and will eventually break and leave because they're unhappy, or neither of you will make any compromises at all and you won't spend any time together and you'll break up. It's inevitable. Why even get to that point where you're so miserable and unhappy because your lifestyle doesn't align with your partners? These are things you notice at the beginning. When you start going out with someone, focus on finding out how they like to spend their time, what activities they like to do, what their interests are. Don't get too mesmerized by their pretty eyes and forget to learn anything significant about them. See if your lives are compatible and if there are way too many differences, end it before it's too late. In my relationship, both of us enjoy cooking, staying physically active, going out in nature, focusing on health and on quality sleep instead of partying all night and drinking. And these are all preferences that both of us had before we even met. We also have different interests, like He's obsessed with going to the sauna and going on dangerous hikes, while I prefer leisurely walks and a trip to the beach. But we make it work. Sometimes we compromise, sometimes each of us does their own thing. But the important part is that we have a lot of aligned interests where we both enjoy the activity that we're doing and neither one of us has to compromise. The goal is not 100% compatibility. I don't think that's even possible. But having quite a few of the same interests is important if you want to have a good time together. These are all things that I believe should be considered before you get serious with someone. They are kind of the prerequisites of a relationship. Once you're in a relationship, there are things you need to know in order to make it last and be happy in it. And the first one is making compromises. No matter how aligned you are with your partner, there are going to be situations where you just don't see eye to eye. And in those moments, you have to know how to compromise. When you're with another human being, you can't expect to always get your way, to always have things be exactly the way you want them to be. Both of you need to be okay with not always getting what you want and compromising for your partner. Here, you have to find a balance so that neither one of you feels like 
you're always making compromises for the other person. I can't tell you where that balance is, you have to figure it out for yourself, but make sure it exists. Don't be stubborn and hell-bent on always getting what you want because you're just gonna end up hurting your partner. If you wanna live a life where you always get things your way, stay single. If you wanna be in a happy relationship, learn how to compromise. It's simple as that. Your partner should be your shelter. They should be the person you feel comfortable sharing everything with. The person you feel safe with, the person you feel okay to be vulnerable with. Because of the way our society works, men are taught to never show any emotions and never show any weaknesses. And I think that's deeply wrong. As a woman in a relationship with a man, I have made it my goal from the very beginning to create a safe space for my partner, where he can be vulnerable and share his feelings, his fears, his insecurities, as well as his dreams and desires. Being vulnerable doesn't make you less of a man, and it's time we stop thinking that way. Our flawed concept of masculinity needs to go. Each of us, regardless of our gender, should feel comfortable sharing their feelings with their partner. And it is our duty to hold that space for our partner and to understand the less than perfect parts of them. And this, of course, goes both ways. I think that's obvious. Your happiness is your responsibility. You can't expect another person to make you happy if you can't make yourself happy. But when we're in a relationship, we can definitely help our partner be happier and stay sane. I feel like mental health is ignored in a lot of relationships because people are too caught up in how they feel and they ignore the other side. But in order for both of you to be happy together, you need to take care of each other's mental health. If you see that your partner's down and something's messing with them, you gotta drop everything and be there for them. And so should they. Believe me, this is crucial if you want to make your relationship work. Very often, when we get into a conflict with someone, we want to prove them wrong. But when you're in a conflict with your partner, ask yourself, is it more important that you are right or that you don't end up hurting your partner? I honestly don't understand how people can go days without talking to each other because they're in a disagreement. That just doesn't work for me. If you know your partner well, and you can only know them well if you have an open communication and a safe space to share stuff in, what I already talked about, when you get into an argument, you will know why they're behaving the way they're behaving. You will have an insight into their thought process and you will be aware of what caused the argument in the first place. When you're arguing, instead of screaming at each other and never arriving at a middle ground, try to take into consideration the feelings of the other person and resolve things calmly. Explain why you think the way you think, let them explain their side as well, and try to come to a conclusion that you're both satisfied with. And never ever go to sleep mad at each other. Think of your partner as your teammate, not as your rival. Their success is your success as well. Their dreams coming to fruition should excite you, not bring you down. There is no space for envy in a relationship. It sucks that I even have to say this, but so often I see people not being supportive of their partner's dreams because their partner becoming successful, whatever success means to them, somehow takes away from their own worth. This is wrong. You should act as a team. You should support each other's dreams, even if they seem impossible, especially when they seem impossible. You should always want the best for your partner and help them become the best version of themselves. Being in a relationship means continuously working towards a better future together. Our relationship is never perfect. There are always things to be improved. People evolve and mature and the relationship matures with them. But this doesn't happen on its own. It is something you have to keep building and keep working on. The quest doesn't end when you get together with someone. That's where it begins. My last and most important point is to not make your partner your everything. We often hear about how our soulmate is going to complete us. And I think that's the most ridiculous thing ever. You are a complete person on your own. The right partner should complement you, not complete you. You have a life of your own, outside of the relationship. You have your own goals and dreams because you are your own person. Your partner can't be your entire life. Which is why I think it's very important to make time for yourself. No matter how much we love spending time with our partner, we must spend time on our own as well. The most important relationship you will have in your life is not the one with your partner, but the one with yourself. You can't have a strong and healthy relationship with another person if you don't have a strong and healthy relationship with yourself first. So, start there. If you derived any value from this video, you will definitely enjoy this one. Subscribe to the channel to hear me ramble more. 
Thank you for being here. I wish you the best of luck in your romantic endeavors and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, we did it, baby!